Welcome to Precon Power Ups with the Nitpicky Nerds. We are upgrading the Primal Genesis deck for only $50. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. Now, I know what you're thinking. They're doing intros? Who cares about that? No, 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 no. Do the opposite. Subscribe to the channel, because we got two more Precon power-ups, one more coming after this, and we're ranking every single commander. And besides, you want to be a subscriber to our channel, because our subscribers are 10% more likely to be populating right now, if you know what I mean. Disclaimer. I have no idea what he means. Gross. <laughs> Why is it gross? I don't know, but let's just explain what precon power-ups are. Precon power-ups are where we take, we take the precon, and using only $50, we upgrade them to a reasonable and more focused deck. Yes, I think we the mana base goes a long way, power level goes a long way, we focus the decks. Yeah, so things we do is we take out cards that are bad. Pick, pick one of the three legends to be the commander, choose the game plan, figure out how we're actually going to win the game, and let's take what Wizards gave us and just, uh, I don't know, hit it on home. Bases are loaded. We just gotta hit it. We the, just gotta make. The, no, the bases are not loaded with this deck. They got a guy on first. They got. They got. And a, we could score two points with a home run. Then, two points. Classic right. baseball points. Who do we choose as the commander? Uh, I think his name is Geared. Is that what his name Gearid? is? Geared. Is it Geared? Geared. <laughs> Geared. Conclave Exile. The pop. The populate duder. Two. Red, green, white for a legendary human shaman. When he enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 green rhino creature with trample. Whenever he attacks, populate. The token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. He is a 2-5, obviously. Why does every populate commander have to be a 2-5? Uh, I just noticed that. I assumed he was a 4-4 because the stats don't really matter. Uh, he's a 2-5. Well, that's obviously. something. He's a 2-5 that you want to be attacking, obviously. Well, I'd rather have him be a 0-7 at that point. Just give him all the defense. Give him he doesn't actually matter. He, you want to send a giant, cool token in. So this deck's theme isn't to go wide. It's to sort of go big and stout. You make like three three threes. You go a little wide. And then you start populating wide. them. Or you make a 6-6, six, six, and then you start populating it. It's really weird. Yeah, but but that Gearhead wants you to have big fatties, and you populate them into attacking. Yeah, so it's like your 4-4 four, four Rhino that you got, you put another 4-4 four, four Rhino in, beaten. It's pretty cool. Uh, honestly... Before, when, before we started doing the power-ups, I had no idea what Gira did. I just knew that when he attacked Populate, I'm like, yeah, that's all right. And I was like, oh, when he enters, you make a 4-4? Four, four? That's pretty good. I yeah. didn't even know that. And also, also those tokens are attacking, which is also important. Yeah, it makes the token attacking. So you can do some a lot, a lot of cool stuff. We're going to do as much stuff as we can for $50. Uh, this deck is a uh, make a bunch of tokens, go wide, run over your opponents with a bunch of creatures. Yes. That's how it wins. And for the record, this is by far the best pre-con. I, like, I don't even think it's that close. In terms of what it's trying to do, yeah, I agree. Because uh, every precon strategy is smash with creatures, and it only fits one deck. It fits this one, smash with creatures. So this deck's great at it, and this is the only deck that can actually protect its board even, with um, with board protection, board white protection. Even the even the morph deck wants to smash with creatures. Oh yeah, the morph deck just dying to smash in there. The flashback deck, of course, is trying to get in with one one flyers. Yeah, or two two flyers sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So this deck. How's it going to win? We just told you. Make an army of fat tokens and just poop on people with them. Or just attack them with Might them. Might as well call it Instead Populate. Or not. Or you could just call it Populate right, and you attack can, them with You don't them. even have to say it. You can just say make a token yeah. attack you. And if they say, what does that do? You can say Populate. <laughs> don't say that. All right, don't, don't say that. I'm just going to advise against... This is like the second video in the row where I've advised against your weird advice. What was my first one? I, something about singing a song. Yeah, I don't listen to my own advice. I, <laughs> yeah. just, I just give you guys advice. All right, so the upgrades, we have to cut the cards that don't fit the game plan at all in this deck. We have Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. I have no idea what that refers to, but Marisi doesn't do anything to help with tokens. Uh, Nest Tender, this is like, maybe you could play it, but we wanted to just cut it out because we have no eggs. We're not going to try to work around eggs. It's not worth it. Make this its own commander if you want to do that. It makes 01 eggs. They're not even, they're small. They don't even do it. Yeah, it's like completely not what we want to do. Yeah. Other than that you can populate an interesting token. But I don't want to do that. Uh, Tectonic Hellion. Uh, it's a cool card. When it attacks, the person with the most lands, it's got to sacrifice some lands. Nobody wants to do that. But we don't want to play it because we can't reliably make token copies of it. There's only a few cards that do that. And this is like a thousand mana. 
So even then, we don't want to do that. Uh, Tengrath, uh, I don't know what he, he's Tengarth. doing. Tengarth. Ten, he's ten. a first mate, darn it. He's, he's a, showing up. He's a first mate. When he's tapped, he like, you can give him to another player to, to attack with. Not what we want to do. We Not can't even, even make copies of him because he's legendary. So skip. Scare Tiller doesn't belong in any of these decks. We talked about it. Skip. Commander's Insignia. I don't think that's strong enough for a commander. I don't think they understand how to how to buff things. And Cliffside Rescuer, Same. I'd rather just play Lightning Greaves or any... I'd rather play Blossoming Defense or how something. About, I don't know. How about Mom? <laughs> yeah, Mother of Runes, anything else. Not necessarily goes in this deck, but just... This card oh, doesn't go in the deck. But how much better is Mother of Runes than Cliffside Garbage? <laughs> Cliffside Garbage uh, team? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what it is. This, is, this, is. this card's bad. Yeah, it's not very good. Now, we gotta add cards that do improve the game plan and make people who use our upgrades go like, wow, this deck is so much more functional now. Uh, so let's start with uh, Mrs. Pashiri. Mrs. Pashiri. This uh, is Ovia Pashiri, Sage Lifecrafter. And the reason we say it like that is I think we were on a road trip. I know, I can tell you why, exactly why. And it was a podcast of somebody reading the story. Yeah, and he does and he does all the voices. And he has no charisma. <laughs> and the girl voices are hilarious. They're exactly like this. I am a girl. <laughs> yeah, so. Ovia Pashiri, Mrs. Pashiri is here. We have, well, because she makes, okay, she can make, if I explain it. Yeah, I want to explain what the card she does. She can make a servo, and she can make a big, giant servo that has XX, where X is the creatures you control is that as a, you make it. Is it a servo? No, it's a construct, but it's a big old servo. Yeah, it's not a servo, I was going to yeah, say. She it. comes out early, and she counts towards herself, and she makes really big creatures. So I, I like this card a lot. It's almost like the budget, um, the budget big token version of the uh, one drop. What's his name? Why can't I think of his name? Rhys the Redeemed. Oh, I Except know. this card's actually better in this deck than Rhys the Redeemed would be. Yeah, I agree. This card is better than Rhys the Redeemed would be. Right, so we got Mouth to Feed. Uh, it makes a beefy token. And then you draw for each creature with and three more power. Draw for all your beefy tokens. And it has one of the best names of a card ever. Mouth to Feed? I think second only to Ribbons is Mouth. <laughs> Nothing's gonna be ripped. I don't know. Feed is pretty ridiculous too. Feed is weird, but you already cast mouth. Okay, but now you've cast. I'll, I'll cast feed for my graveyard. Feed. Uh, Wait. So. Oh, go ahead. You bring all the animals to water, but you're the one who gets to feed. You get cards. That's pretty mean. I don't know. That's. Mm. All right. What else we got? Uh, Advent of the Worm. Uh, four mana. Make up five five. At instant speed. This is not a great rate. You really want, I think once you populate the token once, you're in business. But you don't want to just jam this as a 5-5. I think you want to get populate value out of it. Most of the time, yeah. And the, well, the best part is it has flash. I mean, it is an instant, so you can at least surprise somebody with it as a blocker, as an attacker, play gear ed, then you flash an Avid of the Worm, and now you get another worm coming in. I mean, the thing about Avid of the Worm is it's... I just don't think you want to play it on turn four and go, gotcha! Yeah, no, I agree. No. That, I mean, it just fits in this deck because of the populate theme. It doesn't fit otherwise. It's not like it's. No, just... I'm saying it fits because of the populate theme, so don't just play it. Yeah, I agree. You gotta build around it. I was, I was trying to say I agree with that it statement. It didn't work. Okay, the exact same <laughs> card, but cooler, or model one. Uh, this is two green, green, white, white for a worm. <laughs> for for an advent of the worm that makes an advent of the worm. <laughs> it, it makes makes the same token that uh, you ten give power, advent of the worm. Ten trampling power for six mana, that's all right. That starts to be like in the worth it zone, I think. Yeah. It's when you when you populate. Yeah, and then and then when you populate, you get 15 power. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, you can go gear ed into this too. So that's pretty good. I, that is a pretty good curve. I don't know. I want to bring up Armada Worm's dubious artwork, but I don't know if this is the place for that. So <laughs> we just I know mean, that the artwork is dubious. It's a, it's on screen. I mean, it's well, not maybe like, it's you not like... have to censor it for YouTube. <laughs> It's it, <laughs> this is this is some good after our, all of our gay jokes last video we can't make many more. No, we've reached our quota. <laughs> we, They're gonna come after us. All right, we got Omnath Locus of Rage. This card is very very good. In any deck that's throwing lands into play, you just make one elemental, and I think you're in business. Yeah, and the thing is, it becomes tough when you <laughs> to be, when you start board wiping. It's like. Do you want to board wipe four or five of these away? Because you're going to be able to get solid damage. 3U, 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 3U. No, when they board wipe, you go 3U, 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 3U. That would be really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I would just concede. I don't want to deal with that. But it's a great way to make huge tokens that we can populate later that actually have an ability of when they die, you get to lightning bolt somebody. Yeah, as long as you have Omnath still. Right. Omnath has the ability of whenever an yes. elemental dies, right. you lightning bolt something. So you want to keep Omnath. But you get, I mean, a 5-5 five five for just a land? And then you can populate? Yeah. No, Omnath fits in this like really well. Yeah. He makes, again, 
We want to make big tokens. Big beater tokens. I was going to say beatery. Beatery. Big beatery We're tokens. We're going to commence some, some face beatery. Uh, so big beatery tokens. Uh, this is one of the coolest ways to make big beatery tokens. Uh, Azuri's Perdition. So for each creature your opponent's control, you make a 4-4, four, four, and then that 4-4 four, four fights... Uh, <laughs> Each one of each one of those four fights fights one of those creatures. It's so cool. And so it's, it's a good like. It's a green board wipe. They finally made it, like they figured out how to make a green board. This card is awesome. And we have cards like uh, Elemental Bond, where whenever a creature with power three or more enters under your control, you draw a card. So you just make like twelve creatures, draw twelve, and then fight everything and kill everything that has four or less toughness. Uh, that's pretty good, I would say. <laughs> it's not just pretty good. This might be the best card in the deck, I think. I don't even know. Oh, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but it's, it's good. It's awesome. It's, it's the most awesome card in the deck. I agree. It, it, okay, that's a fair That's yeah. a fair assessment. I would agree with the most awesome card in the deck. Blade Splicer, another semi-beefy token. The, the, the bar is definitely 3-3. Three, three. We don't want to make two twos or one ones. No, no, not at all. Right, so the bar is 3-3. Three, three. Blade Splicer makes a 3-3 three, three at pretty reasonable cost. So put it in. Good rate. Uh, and if you were playing, you could play like... There's a couple creatures that when they answer make a token, so I was like, you could play like a semi flicker theme if you wanted to like go. You could play a golem with that. You could play a golem theme if you wanted to. <laughs> There's kind of a lot of golem synergy. There's the new splice spell from Modern Masters that makes a golem, Master Golem, Splicer Golem, the Vigilance Golem, the green card that makes two golems and regenerates a golem. There's a lot of golems. There's like cards. seven golem cards. There's the new Cavalier makes a golem if you destroy your own thing. There's there's, well, there's more golems than that. There's the, 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 well, I wasn't like, gonna list them all. There, there's like a there was like a sub theme of that in like Mirrodin. Or, yeah, the splicers. Yeah, but there, there was also like more than just the splicers. Yeah, there was a little bit more. But what, what's the last one on our awesome ads list? Uh, this is Dragon Whisperer, where if you have Ferocious, you can pay six. Six. I thought it was. I was gonna say four red red, which is what it is. You can pay six to make a uh, a nice little dragon. Four four flyer. That's not a little dragon. He's a little dragon. And you can do it at instant speed, which I really like. Uh, so it's another job too. It costs like what? Two. It's kind of. It reminds me right of on. Mrs. Pashiri. It is kind of like Mrs. Pashiri. <laughs> So, what I like about this card is if you have a dominating board state and you're waiting for people to kind of wipe the board and you don't necessarily have something, you just pass and you're like, all right, make another 4 4. I didn't spend any cards on this. This card's really good. Dragon Whisperer can even start beating in there. It gains flying. Classic. Get, the, get him, Dragon Whisperer. Well, he's like, hasa, hasa, hasa. and then he's like, I have flying now. Hasa, hasa. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other upgrades we made to the deck? Straight up one for one cuts and replacements. Okay, so in some of the card drop department, we took out Gork's pack leader. This card's overpriced. Uh, he's like, overpriced as in it's five mana. That's too many. Yeah. Elemental Bond is good. It's five, man it's five mana for a creature that's easily removable. Yes, I want it to be an enchantment or something else. Uh, like Elemental Bond. Then we took out Colossal Majesty. So slow. And you might not even get it. You have to wait. It's like really, really bad for Exit Arena. It's two and a green at your upkeep. If you control a four power creature, you draw a card. Oh, oh, it's yeah. so gross. Uh, so we place that with like mouth to feed. May have heard of it. <laughs> with so feed, feed obviously gives you the draw, which I mean, it just feels like it's better pack leader in a way for the stack. It does feel like that very much so. I think even if it costs you the same amount of mana, I mean, it ends up you get the value right away. Definitely. I mean, mouth three three for three. Sure. Feed. It's four mana. Draw a bunch of cards. That feels good. I like the installment plan better. What's up? What else we got? Uh, we got Calamity. Uh, so it's six mana. Draw a card for each creature you control and gain that much life. Calamity. <laughs> that cal it's camaraderie. Oh my god. I was calamity. Like, I was like, what the hell is calamity? That's not anything. What card is the? I was like, is that one of the elemental cycles? Like dread? Is that uh, the green one? No, it's calamity. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. You're terrible. I read it really quick. Did uh, you? <laughs> we have Life's Legacy. Wait, we're just going to keep that? <laughs> we're not going to go back? Nope, we're not going back. Life's Legacy. <laughs> One and a green, sacrifice a creature, and then you draw cards equal to its power. It's a really efficient rate. Last card draw replacement here. We have Rich Card's Expertise. You're making 5-5 five, five tokens all over the place. There's even bigger creatures than that. They're all, they're all over the place in this. So you draw equal to the highest power among creatures you control, then you can play a card with Converted Mana costs 5 or less from your hand for free. I like it because it doesn't allow you to get blown out. It doesn't target a creature. It doesn't say draw cards equal to a target creature's power. So they can't get spot removed, you'll just draw less cards if they kill your biggest thing. Yeah. And casting a spell for free gives you 5 of your 6 mana back. So, I mean, that Dude, is... It's just a good catch. You'd be losing money. 
So we cut, he didn't play that. Yeah, so going to the uh, the removal special section here for this. This was a one for one here. Splice in twine. I don't Splice know. in twine is actually a two for one. But we replaced it with a better two for one called Crush Contraband. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like Slice and Twine. That one you can pay four mana to destroy another thing. I would also, maybe, if you had a higher budget, I'd replace it with Force of Vigor. No, oh, yeah. Force Compare that to Force of Vigor. I'd take Force of Vigor every time. Force of Vigor is a really good card. I mean, Crush Crush Band is basically the same thing. It might even be better in certain scenarios. I mean, it's, it's definitely better in certain scenarios. In the, in the scenario being when they're an artifact and an enchantment. <laughs> yeah, when there's one and one, or you want them gone. When they're one and one and you don't have an extra green card in your hand. Yeah, or you want them gone. <laughs> Exile. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, exiling is also is pretty strong. Right, so here's some mediocre token makers that we hate. Soul of Zendikar, pay five, make a three three? No, that's, not even close. Oh, that's so expensive. That's really slow. You're never going to be able to get that going. Giant Adiphage manages to be even slower. It's seven mana for a seven seven, and then you have to hit somebody, and then you get a seven seven, and then next turn you can attack with Gearhead, and you can start going off and making more seven sevens, which just died to a board wipe anyway. I don't understand that card. It just feels like a win more where you try to set it up and the only thing you set up is a win more situation. <laughs> Wingmate Rock, uh, he makes basically copies of himself when he's attacking. Not many cards I've hated more than Cons of Tarkir Limited. It's so annoying. It's unbeatable. You know what the worst part is? They think they're so clever sending in that stupid 1-1 one, one, when you, they know that you have a 5-5 five, five to block it. <laughs> like, why would they send in that? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't know if we need to talk about cons of Tarkir Limited, but we replaced them with really efficient token makers, Mrs. Pushini, Armada Worm, and Tender Shoot Drive, which I like a lot in the EDH, and I never play it. I, I mean, it's tough to like, you gotta find a home for it. It's not a, it's it's not like, a I mean, it's a tokens card, it's really good. Yeah, this doesn't go in every deck, though, it's that's a what I'm saying. It's a five mana 2 2. Every upkeep, you get a sapling, and then if you have 10 or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing, and all your saplings get plus 2 plus 2. It's definitely strong. It makes three threes every turn. It's better than Verdant Force for sure. You're gonna get City's Blessing in like five seconds with this deck. Well, you're gonna get the City's but In EDH, you're always getting City's Blessing. Also, Tennis Shoot Dryad, if you have played nothing up to the point of Tennis Shoot Dryad, you have six. Yeah, five lands gives you, this is the sixth permanent, upkeep one, seven, upkeep two, eight, upkeep three, nine, upkeep yours, ten. Yeah, so you're always like- So how are you not getting the City's Blessing? You're, you just are. You have to like, play a ritual or something on turn one to not get it. And then you have it even sooner, so never mind. All right, final category is lands. We always upgrade the lands in these because casting your spells is very important. Uh, we cut four that come into play tap lands. They're just, they're- Unexciting, not good. They're just dual coming to play tap lands. I mean, I could read off what they actually are, but who cares? They all have different names and they're all the same card. Yeah. Three Karoo lands, the original Ravnica, bounce lands. There's no synergy and I only play them when there's synergy. Yeah. There's not. There's, no, there's no burgeoning in this deck. No. One forest, one plains, had to cut some basics. I hate how many basics are in all these decks. I don't like it. Is it a two million? You wanna, let's run down from the bottom up here, what we added. Because some of these are tech lands. Uh, we have Moss Wart Bridge. You're gonna have 10 power <laughs> yeah. to hide away this. Yeah, it's a hideaway land. Uh, did you know, because we just learned this recently, that hideaway is always four? Oh no, it's hideaway. Hideaway is the thing that makes the permanent enter the battlefield tapped. Which is like... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So, yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. It, it entering tapped is contingent upon it having hideaway. Yes, uh, so, like, the card... They printed the new card with hideaway. Amount of Masters. Amount of Masters. Watchful something. Well, well, it'll be on screen. Yeah, the Watchful Seer. Yeah, and I got blown out because it was tapped. That was like... I did not see that on the card. Yeah, it, it only enters tapped because of hideaway, because hideaway that's makes things not just tapped. Yeah, that's, that's dumb. Weird. <laughs> but this card is good. It's basically card draw in a land slot. We also have Battlefield Forge, Canopy Visca, Scatter Groves, Shelter Thicket, just good duels. But also Mirror Pool is a really nice addition because it makes a token that's a copy of a creature you control. Yeah. You can you can get cheeky tokens that you shouldn't have access to with this. Yeah, like, uh, what's the name one? I don't know, something like, a, I'm just going to name a random creature. It's not even in the deck. Thrag Tusk. You know what would be really cool? Uh, Armada Worm. Armada Worm. Get a token that's a copy of Armada Worm and then another token. Uh, yeah, then you populate the Armada Worm. Which is like double populating. That'd yeah. be cool. Anything with with sweet ETBs, dies, or static abilities that's in this deck. Yeah. Even I, something like a Solemn Simulacrum would be or sweet. Or Tender Shoot Dryad. Tender Shoot Dryad. That's the one, baby. That's, that's so cool. That's pretty good. And another beefy token in a land, Grove of the Guardian. Uh, this is a card that, <laughs> I don't know, I thought it would see some play in like standard when it came out. Because it seemed really cool. Because it seemed really cool. Yeah, but it's like, pay five mana, tap it. 
Make and tap eight. two creatures. And tap two creatures. Make, Make it eight, eight eight. I think it's vigilance too. May or may not have vigilance. That's a good token to be populated. Is it Vigugazi? I think it's supposed to be. I think it, I think it's supposed to be. Vigugazi, Vigugazi got one one stronger. <laughs> War of the Spark now is a nine nine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Vichugazi, I wasn't sure. I though. think it's the Guardian of Vichugazi or something, but the card's actually pretty good, and it's super budget, so definitely play it in your gear red decks. So, budget, $50. We try to spend as much of that as possible, so we spent $48.37. Yep, uh, original CMC, 3.9. Because... 3.9! I don't know why I wasn't expecting I, I wasn't expecting you to repeat it and be super excited about it. I was not excited. Our new CMC. 3.67! 3.67! Oh, yeah. Or like 3.6s. Nailed it. 31 changes total. And that is how we would upgrade this deck with just $50. Yep. And remember, because they can be upgraded for just $50, if you take a $100 bill to your game store, you should be able to leave with this with our deck list. You're going to walk out with a competitive... Take this to your table, win some games deck. We're calling it 65%. That's what, we're, I, th that's what I think these that's decks are. That's what we're saying, we're settling around 65%. That's, yeah, that's where I, like when I was looking at the list, I'm like, these are close. Yeah. That's a deck I would play. Close. They're close. So, that's it for this video. I think this is the best deck for sure. If you had to buy one, I would say recommend buy this one. Yeah, I Maybe agree. Any closing thoughts at all? I was thinking, no, I was thinking if this is the one I would buy. I might buy the Morph one. But that's not, it's not because it's the best. The black red one is cool. I would not buy the Jeskai one. Yeah, that's the one I wouldn't buy at all. Yeah, no. I, I wouldn't just, even consider it, it. They didn't give you anything for that deck. Yeah. So uh, special shout outs to our 21 patrons. Absurd. Now let's be quick, real quick here. We have 21 patrons. When we get to 25 patrons, we're doing an ask, ask us anything. Ask from, me anything. Yes, pulling from our Discord. So our patrons get to ask us whatever. And then that goes into a video, a podcast episode. Yeah, it'll be really, I think that's going to be super fun to do. It's going to be so much fun to just compile a list of questions, answer them honestly, obviously. We'll be honest. Uh, ooh, what's, ooh. Might not be PG if the people want to ask real questions. Uh, well, uh, I don't know why our answer would have to not be PG. I don't know. So what's your favorite swear word that you can't say? <laughs> you can't, there you go. It can't be, it has to be PG. We'll answer every question. Uh, we but love, we love yes. all these 21 patrons. You guys are all awesome. We love them enough to make them not uncomfortable. Yeah, the, so. The pinnacle of uncomfortability is where we don't love them. We, and I couldn't make that any clearer if I tried. So we're gonna end right now. Right now. Uh, Do the thing. Uh, peace out, Tribe Scout. <laughs>